Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. So in today's part six of my Annex Engineering K3 uh, build, we're going to do the tool head assembly. Um, now I did uh, start this earlier and realized that I had reversed these two rails, so I had to actually disassemble the X and Y rails and then reassemble them again in the correct order. Uh, but now I'm in a position to continue with the installation. Um, the center of the tool head on the Annex K3 is this piece, and I have a CNC version, but there's plastic printed versions available as well. Um, it's known as the party plate, so all of the various uh, parts of the tool head will attach to this central plate. And this plate uh, sits in this orientation on the printer, and we'll basically, oops, dropped it. We'll basically connect to the uh, carriages, the X and Y carriages, like this. Uh, and we'll mount the screws through the top here and then coming from the underside through the bottom of the plate into this carriage here. And then with that in place, this will give us the, this, the platform that we need to add the fans, the extruder, the hot end, uh, in my case, a beacon probe. Um, so that'll be attached on the bottom. Um, so for this hot end, I am going to be using a Dragon UHF. It's actually been modified uh, to a UUHF unofficially, um, is what we're calling it. And so the way we do that is by putting a volcano length nozzle um, into the hot end and using the uh, hot end extender nut or adapter from a Rapido V1 uh, into here. So um, you can, basically I did this uh, and I end up with only one break in the heat, in the melt zone. So there's only the one join rather than two joins if you were doing it a different way. Uh, personally, I find this a little more stable and efficient, uh, but people can do that in different methods depending on what they're trying to achieve. I'll put the sock back on. So the Dragon UHF modified is what we're going for for this build. Um, the Honey Badger kit uh, from Fabrico came with some Honey Badger fans. These are 12 volt 4010 blower fans. Um, and so they're gonna be powered over 12 volts. We have the hot end fan, and this is a, I think 30 by 10, uh, 30 millimeter by 10 millimeter hot end fan, also by Fabrico and Honey Badger. And uh, that one is also powered over 12 volts. So that's a 12 volt fan as well. I'm going to be using a modified um, Sherpa Micro. Um, this Sherpa Micro does not have a uh, removable idler. Uh, the idler is fixed. You can see it here. Uh, so it's a fixed idler. Um, and it has a provision for attaching a micro switch here, um, which can be used as a filament runout sensor. Um, so the micro switch, the switch will face inside towards where the filament is. And when the switch becomes uh, disengaged, I guess, that tells the printer that the filament has run out. There's no more filament in the path, so it can pause the print that way. It also has an ECAS um, connector for the top, and the ECAS 04 connector is useful for kind of uh, securing the Bowden tube that will hold the filament and run the filament up to the, um, to the filament spool. So yeah, that'll attach to the uh, front of the plate. And the other part that goes in this is the uh, carabiner. Now this is uh, known as a K3 because I'm building an Annex K3. So instead of carabiner with C-A-R-A-B-I-N-E-R, -E it's K3-R-A-B-I-N-E-R. -E so K3 rabiner. Um, and this is a just a pass-through connector plate. Um, that sends the the, sig the wiring basically from the electronics bay over this, this umbilical um, to all the different parts. So we have a connector here for, um, this is the hot end fan. We have the thermistor and, and heater wires for the hot end. Um, here we have one of the part cooling fans. This is a probe connector for what I'll use to connect the beacon probe. Um, here we have our motor wires, so our extruder motor connects into that, and then the other hot end fan connects here. Um, this includes this 18, 16, 16 pin Molex connector. Um, 
Molex Microfit connector, and I've plugged it in, and <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know that I can unplug it, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, you don't want this coming loose because this is powering all of your, your hot end stuff, uh, all your tool head uh, electronics. Um, but it will make for interesting when make it interesting when I want to service anything or take anything off or take anything apart. So this might be kind of a static fixture and immovable because not going to lie, I, I it's like there's a clip here to kind of unclip it and I'm pressing down and unclipping it, but it still just doesn't want to budge. Um, so I've got it in there. It'll stay in there. I can mount the whole thing with the wire attached. It's no problem. And then route the wires to the electronic bay on the other side. All right, so that's it for what makes up the tool head. Um, I'm actually gonna stop the video here uh, because I do have company coming over and I'm not gonna get into the actual assembly of the tool head uh, here, but I will do so over some time-lapse photography for the next segment of this build. Um, so look forward to seeing that um, in the video following this. And not gonna lie, assembling the tool head is gonna be a bit of work. Uh, it will probably be a slightly longer video even on time-lapse. Um, and uh, it's a little fiddly and fidgety, but I've got some of the parts kind of sub-assemblies pre-done. Um, so I'm not gonna undo, for example, my extruder assembly. I'm not gonna take it apart and rebuild it on screen. Um, you'll have to look up how to build a Sherpa Micro. And this is, a, like I said, a modified version that has some features that I liked, uh, but essentially it builds the same way as any other Sherpa Micro, uh, except for that idler uh, tension arm, which works a bit differently in this one. It's not on a, on a swing arm, so. And that's that. So if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Um, thank you for all the assistance I've received from users on a number of different Discord servers. There's been the Fabrico Discord server, the Annex Engineering Discord server, the Fizzy's Tech Discord server. I've had some assistance with modifying some parts in CAD. Uh, my own CAD skills are still pretty, um, pretty minimal. Um, and so thank you to Kyle the Voron Modder. Uh, specifically who helped with um, modifying a couple parts to fit my specific needs. Um, but yeah, I'll look forward to getting the tool head assembly completed in the next segment. Thanks for watching.